Hi, and welcome back to my Secret Life interview series. That's a project we are really in love with because it's about hope. We are mm. talking about a time in the life of our guest, and we've got a beautiful guest today, that felt like a darker time. And then we are kind of diving into this story or moment when they saw something new and when life became lighter and different. And mm -hmm. so today we are really happy to have Eva Lo with us and Shelia will introduce her to you. I'm Leah Wernley, as you know, and that's my colleague, Shelia Stevens. Thank you, Leah, for that introduction. So we, we came across Evalo by accident. She took part um, as a speaker on the Three Principles Conference, which um, due to COVID took place virtually this year. And she was one of the first speakers along with Derek and she just blew us her way mm -hmm. with her deep feeling and her seeing of mind. And so we're so happy to have her here today. Maybe just a little background information to her. She lives in Greenland. Um, she's married and has two children. She's a 3P facilitator and coach. And she has got a large group of people, like over 3,000 people who she um, works within this understanding on Facebook. And I think Leigh and I did a percentage of Greenland. That's a pretty big um, percentage because there aren't a lot of people living <laughs> in Greenland. And we have no idea what Eva is gonna talk about today for her secret story. Maybe she doesn't either. She's, she said there's a big space here. She's just gonna see what comes up. But we'd just like to start out with um, the question, Eva Lowe. Maybe you could talk about um, the beginning of your story, which is a time in your life where you felt like something might be wrong with you and where you felt sort of in a, in a dark struggling place. And then you'll take us on to what happened after that. So I'm just going to turn it over to you, Eva Lowe, and we're so happy to have you. Thank you so much. Um, what's, what a pleasure. What a... What an honor to uh, have this opportunity to be listened to. Uh, oh, it's amazing just saying that, that being listened to, it touches me. <laughs> that people um, give their time, give their energy um, and space to be there for you. So just, just knowing that people um, listen is just so wonderful. It touches me because for me, listening is also um, as where they show their love. Mm. And I am, it's something that I have thought um, that people were not listening to me when I was. Uh, young when I was teenager and when I was a little girl um, that being listened to has been lacking mm -hmm. so I have made many thoughts of why they are not there for me or listen to me um, that I thought that it meant that there was something wrong with me <laughs> so uh, um, I'm just um, happy I am so happy that I have stumbled across this understanding because listening is again, something very uh, profound that I saw. <laughs> um, and then it's, it's so simple that it's just by listening that you get to see more and more mm -hmm. of the things that you have never seen. So, I grew up in South Greenland in a, a, 
little a small village, uh, not village, a small city called Kapokto. And there are about 3,000 people. And I am um, the eldest, I am the oldest of four siblings. Um, we had two girls and two boys. And, and I grew up with parents that had problems in their, in their relationship. And they have a history of how um, they also carried their problems with them into the relationship. And as an oldest sibling, I felt that I needed to be responsible for the things that they couldn't be responsible to. So I was in, in a young age, I considered myself as a little mom <laughs> mm -hmm. to my siblings as a natural thing, I guess, um, that I needed to take care of them and, 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 and take more extra responsibilities. And, and, I, and I felt like a little adult mm -hmm. um, and I was shy. I, was, um, I wasn't a loudspeaker and, and I didn't uh, crave attention. I was more inward and more introvert and, and I started a lot. Uh, I normally dig deep in my uh, homeworks and read in reading books um, to hide from the world and from the problems, to get away from the problems in our family. Um, so I have always felt in in my, especially in my adolescence, I felt that there was something wrong with me. <laughs> um, uh, because I wasn't normal as, as the other um, teenagers in my class in, at the school. So, um, and, and growing up in a, in a place called Kapokto, um, it's, a, it's a city where you cannot travel, um, easily travel to other cities. So you, have, you either have to take the boat or helicopter or airplanes. So each cities and settlements in Greenland, they are closed and isolated from, from other places. Um, and then, and I felt stuck because of I was in, in a place like that. Um, I couldn't run away. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't run away. I but I love being in the nature and and also uh, watching a lot of videos and and learning new languages and and school helped me a lot to to get away from the problems and and my thoughts of that something wrongs with me. <laughs> uh, but luckily, I had good friends and and then uh, most of the time uh, we had a nice uh, functional family but there were times especially in the weekends that my parents um when they get drunk and then they're they are this unsafe place in in our home um so i felt um i couldn't speak about the problems um i i felt this passive aggressive and i just shut, shut the world uh away from me I, I just wanted to be in the room and 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 during my teenage or adolescence time um, I had an opportunity to to be an exchange student in Panama when I was 16 years old and that's where I started to open up um, to to and to uh, show the world who I am. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, but there was something, I felt that there was something wrong with the, me that I uh, was judging myself. And, mm -hmm. and then I was one of the shyest uh, uh, in the group, exchange student groups in Panama. But during the, that year, I, I opened up and then I saw a new way of life, a new, a new culture, a new expression of life and new language. And, and I ex enjoyed that a lot. 
and got new friends and started to learn uh, speak Spanish. And I met many people from Germany too, who were in Panama. So I got to know uh, many young people from different countries. So it's a multicultural uh, space where I get to, uh, to be me and, and then to be different too. So <laughs> I really love that that time of my life because I, I was away from my you know, problems, uh, family problems. Uh, so I felt this burden was um, a little bit lighter. And then, and then um, when I came back to my hometown, hometown, I started to go to high school and being drunk became a normal thing. It's weekends, and because mm -hmm. it's the only activity mm -hmm. for us that that was fun for us. <laughs> and then, um, in three years, I I got new friends again, but I remember wanting to feel adrenaline. I wanted to experience uh, dangerous dangerous thing. I started to steal <laughs> in the shop, in shops like shampoo or <laughs> like uh, unnecessary things just to feel this rush. <laughs> and then we drank a lot and, and then, but we have a good time at, at, at in the high school and I did have good grades. And um, unfortunately, uh, when I was 19, I was, in a party and then I wanted to go home alone and and unfortunately that night a man came to my room and raped me and it's the beginning of my journey mm -hmm. to fix my life to fix myself to um, pick up the parts that were that is broken inside of me and I started to seek help and, and got really serious with fixing myself. Mm -hmm. And I was very de depressed. I was in a very dark place, um, depressed, dark place. And then I couldn't get help. And even though family knew it, they couldn't have, they haven't, they didn't have the resource, emotional resource to support me. Um, so even I, well, I was even worse and, and I was so alone. Uh, so I can say that's the most dark period of my life mm -hmm. where I had to even hide even myself even more. And, and that it made something inside of me that I am absolutely broken. I have those tra traumas and I, I have to do something about it. Uh, and a big part of me thought it's my fault. It's my fault that, that it happened to me. It's my fault that I got raped. It's my fault that something that's it's this shame and, and I felt mm. this destroyed and it's my fault because I'm I am pretty. Uh, it's my uh, it's my fault that I am beautiful because I am feel beautiful. I I was raped. Mm -hmm. So this rejection, I reject my body, I rejected my femininity, I, I, I didn't want to embrace my, my sex, my female, uh, my femininity. So I struggle a lot and I wanted to have a relationship and I yearned to have a healthy relationship, mm -hmm. but I couldn't, That there was something that stopped me, um, even though I really wanted to, but this resistance was too big so I struggle and, and and but something inside of me um, decided no it has to be different it has to change I have to do something about it I, I don't want to live like my parents I don't want to live I don't want to have a dis dysfunctional relationship I want to have a good life I want to have a happy life um, mm -hmm. um, so that decision that um, 
uh, I don't know how to call that, but this strong uh, um, um, goal, I had this goal, I, I have to do something about it, was enormous, enormous. And then I felt terrible many years. Uh, and then the only places I could get help was I got to learn a group where they did healing uh, and then and they had angel cards and they had crystals and then they had different kinds of way to express emotions like anger or or where we openly talk about emotions and then and feeling that we have the support and and be able to be ourselves mm-hmm. so it's one of the the places I went to to feel better and and it helped enormously uh, but it's it, it even though I did so much work with that I never felt whole I never felt whole um, back then I didn't know I was repeating in my mind what have had it been in the past I I didn't know that I took it to the now and replay it Mm. and felt bad and because I thought that I had to replay it to get out from that feeling Um, and and I learned to do sound he uh, sound uh, soul voice or sound healing I did um, I learned so many things in in new age or spiritual um, uh, self-help universe, I did different techniques and then honored my feelings 100%. Mm-hmm. I was dedicated to feel better. <laughs> but I never felt whole. <laughs> um, each time I, I come to this bad feeling, I took my, my angel card or each time I feel bad, I did healing to myself. Or so, um, I was very good to listen to myself. Um, and then it's like an, a never-ending story. <laughs> always fixing, always mm-hmm. coming back to the bad mm-hmm. feeling, and then um, and I rejected to to have children as well um, because unconsciously I thought that the world is not a safe place to have children so in in the decision I have made in myself was um, I have to love myself 100% and be 100% 100%, give myself happiness instead of coming into a relationship and expecting that the other person will give me happiness so in my mind I just I had made a decision that to make a functional relationship where I am I am a whole person and then I work hard to become whole Mm -hmm. I work hard to see myself in the mirror like you can read from Louis L. Hayes books um I love myself. I appreciate myself. I value myself. I did so much affirmation and I felt better when I have done affirmations uh, and I wanted to believe them. And then I knew that when I do that, I will become whole. When I do that, I will be healthy. Mm. When I do that, I will be healed. Mm. So it it took so much um, work to be in that feeling and then and I enjoy that um, and it helped me a lot um, and then I, I am um, and then I met my husband and I was afraid to get to fall in love mm. <laughs> what if I become um, dependent of him what if I something (laughs) what if we become a dysfunctional Mm. (laughs) relationship what if what if what if that I have great demands and I expect it so much 
uh, how to be in a relationship. Um, and I was so uh, ashamed of telling him that I've been raped. Uh, and I felt that if I tell him in the beginning of our relationship that he will leave me because he will see me so much broken that he won't be able to do anything that I, I thought that I will scare him away, mm -hmm. but it didn't. And then it's, it happened only in my mind. And he loved me since he saw me for the first time. And, and even though we, we be started to, to date, he could see that he will have children with me. And I was not ready <laughs> because I still feel this uh, unpleasant feeling of my own life. Um, and I, I, I had made decision that I wanted to feel ready. I wanted to feel really ready if I want to have children. And if I really, really want to have, if I really, really, really want to be a mom, I will feel that. And during that time, I also went to my to my former psychologist, and it happened three, four, five years, and I still kept in this circle of not feeling good enough. And, and then it took so much out of my life, so much time, so many years in my life, uh, trying different ways techniques, different methods, and then, um, but I ended also that I went to India to become a laughter yoga instructor, and then I had a really fun time too, so I can laugh more in my life, because in my adolescence, I was too serious, I was a little mom, and I was too responsible, so I wanted to catch up what I missed in my childhood, mm -hmm. so that's one of the what the reasons why I became a laughter yoga instructor that I have I have to have more laughter in my life <laughs> and then it was also very fun and and I loved learning new things and and then it's it was I didn't know that it was so much up here um uh, fixing my life from this place <laughs> and it was in the best in my best intention and in the best meaning and I couldn't see that um, and then many things happened and then finally I wanted to become a mom and I was terrified but I did that and 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 work on my feelings and then I became a mom and we have a very healthy relationship my husband and I today uh, so I have struggled and I have worked really hard to have a good life uh, as I have today um, and then when I became a um, consultant in the early childhood education in all Greenland I took those different techniques and and methods from self-help universe to to different places and and villages and then share some of those um, and I wanted to write about how to love yourself in Greenlandic and I wanted to write about how to love your inner child in Greenlandic because I saw that it's a necessity necessity that many people have to love themselves that they have to work really hard as I did mm -hmm. <laughs> and I I shared that with my friend and 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 my friend was a, I she was saying yes let's do that <laughs> and we had like brainstorming of how the book will look like <laughs> Uh, and back then I had um, two children, my daughter and my, my son. My son was um, one year or something when we were talking about that book, pro book project. Um, and I told my little sister, she lives in South Greenland in our hometown. I told her about that on Facebook. Uh, you want to hear about my great idea? <laughs> And she didn't really care. <laughs> Even though she used to be so um, in the same, uh, mm -hmm. like we were like-minded and then uh, exploring the self-help universe and learning about new things. And But back then she didn't really 
she didn't care. <laughs> and then um, I was like, uh, what's happening with her? What, why is she reacting like that? And, and I saw that change. Um, and then <laughs> I was like, oh, what's wrong with her? <laughs> she normally reacts so enthusiastically and then happy for me, but she didn't care. And then she sent me something about um, Natasha Schwedloff had mm -hmm. made with Chris Noonan in Denmark. They were talking about that in Danish. And I was listening to that YouTube uh, recording while I was working uh, in my office. And, and I really didn't understand what they were talking about. Life force, nature, what? <laughs> I was like, what are they talking about? And then I, I was like, I, I didn't understand what they were saying. <laughs> And then, okay, then I will look at the book she's been reading. And she normally uh, has been so um, afraid. Um, she had um, anxiety, but in that period, she wasn't, she wasn't cold. She was calm and then she was relaxed. So she wasn't as, as scared as she normally. And then, okay, I was, I got interested to read Meta Louisa Holland's book in Danish, Did Selhild Brennensin, but I wanted to see where did that um, inspiration come from? And then I saw in the back of the book, uh, Sydney Banks, okay, who's that? <laughs> and I Googled him and then, oh, he had only written a few books. Okay, I will start with the new, the first he, he has been, he had read, uh, uh, written. And then I uh, bought ebook Second Chance, and then I started to read. It's a I was like ah, oh, it's a fiction. And then <laughs> what's that? Okay, it's a man. Okay, <laughs> traveling. Okay, what's what's special about that? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember first time when I some part of that book really. Um, annoyed me and irritated me was the part of the book where um, um, they were discuss uh, they were describing about the differences between discussion and debate uh, mm. I'm, I mean this difference between debating and listening mm. and then in the debating and listening they were saying that when two people are arguing or discussing and they are stuck in their own egos, and then nobody will listen. And it really, really annoyed me. I had to put the book away. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't handle that because I was something really truth um, hit me. Because there, I realized that I have never, ever, ever listened in my life. Mm. I realized that I never, ever, ever have learned to listen. And it annoyed me because I felt that I have wasted my life, my time in education. It's because in my education, we were encouraged to be accusative, creative, and intellectually mm -hmm. always up here. And I felt that I have wasted my time. Um, and, and, I, and I thought, <laughs> I have never considered it as a person who is bad listener. <laughs> and it's, um, it's like, a, okay, it's the truth. I don't know how to listen. And I absolutely, absolutely had no idea how to listen, but my ego was like, <laughs> mm. uh, and then I felt I, I wanted to deny, like, no, it's not true. <laughs> I'm a good listener. <laughs> I'm a good friend and a good wife, and I listen good. And I, but back then I couldn't see how my mind had been so always full, mm -hmm. and I couldn't listen properly mm -hmm. either and listen. And then and then, so I, I ignore that. I ignore that it's not happening. <laughs> 
and 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 then I had an opportunity to travel to Denmark, um, and then I had few days there without my family, only with my colleagues. And then when I bought audiobook, uh, Meta Louisa Holland's audiobook, okay, I will read that on the way back to Greenland. I had my headphones on and and I it's there. I had my first insights that changed my life completely. And the insights after another um, they they were like in a, in line insights were do, 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 hitting me and 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 my life um, beautifully changed to something in a different direction it's it's turned it's outside in inside out it's it's turned uh, everything was reversed <laughs> And, and the insights was such a great gift. It's a big treasure I suddenly saw inside of myself that has been waiting for me. And, and, and I saw that I have unconsciously has, have only been so much up here and having good meanings about how to fix myself, of how to fix the broken part of me. Uh, I saw that it has always been unnecessary to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw beautiful things and uh, I saw them visual insights. It's like in a meditative uh, state or in a dream wake awake state. I, 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 I was like visiting my insight. <laughs> in a new land uh, <laughs> and it was so beautiful because it made sense to me it's the insights that um i don't know how they they were the answers mm-hmm. i have always been seeking all my life all those years since i was 19 to i I was, how old was I? I was 37 when I had my insights. Mm. All those years I have felt broken and, and that I have thought that my soul was damaged. It has only been, it has only been true in my mind mm. that I saw it's not true. It's just a story I have been telling myself. Mm. And I've been seeing that as true, but it it was a made up. Mm. It was a made up, uh, and I believe that. I have believed that so much, and I nourished that, and, and and I didn't know that it. I have made that into my identity, and I saw that's not true. That's not true, and has never been true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It has never been true. I have never been broken. I have never been damaged. I, <laughs> um, what I have been missing, I found that in here. Uh, mm-hmm. I never thought it will be from from here. <laughs> I have always thought that outside. Um, God or angels or a healer or psychologist or I don't know someone else will save me (laughs) but I saw that it can only happen from within me (laughs) and I was like all those years I have tried (laughs) it didn't work (laughs) Mm -hmm. of course it didn't work because it's not true (laughs) Mm -hmm. the truth is the the absolute truth is uh, I am pure I am I am whole I have always been healthy I have always had this beautiful beautiful (laughs) soul and I am 
absolutely perfect my body is not there's nothing wrong with my body or oh, I don't have to change myself I don't have to fix myself I don't have to um, make other people happy or to like me or I only have to be myself because I have always been whole it's like I came back to this purity and so I felt that I have been cheated. <laughs> um, why didn't other people tell me about this? <laughs> yes. I wasted money. I wasted, <laughs> I wasted my life. I, uh, I was like, mm. but, but, I, but I also saw that it's okay. It happened now. It happened. I got, I had insights and that's, oh, that's, it should be back then in 2018. And that insight, the first insight was uh, the 8th of March, 2018. It's the International Women's Day. I will always remember that because it's, it's the day I found out uh, the spiritual part of me or that uh, no, my true nature my absolutely true nature. I, I, I became that or oh, something, um, pollu some pollution that I have had as a cover, it was, it fell away. And I felt that I was a new person, a new, a new evolu, a new life. I got my second chance. I didn't even have to work hard to forgive, forgive the people who have hurt me. I didn't even have to work to let go. I didn't even have to uh, uh, let go of the past. It just happened because I understood that it. Uh, I have only um, hold on to those traumas in my mind and I saw that it's not necessary to to hold uh, mm. to to hold them because it doesn't make sense mm. <laughs> and, and it's because they are not in the now they are not here and I'm I'm absolutely healthy and 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 I knew that I can rely on to that true nature or my soul or the oneness that I experienced in the insights, I, I felt this oneness. Mm -hmm. I wasn't separated from anything. I was part of everything, but as a unique uh, energy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, but still it's the same as everything else, but just in my own form. And then I felt this, um, I was, um, my new identity um, I felt so neutral mm. I felt like I was uh, invisible but powerful uh, mm. I felt so like water or like sky or, or air mm. <laughs> um, absolutely pure um, and then I started to see new things in my life. I saw how we have separate realities that my husband or my children or what happens, what have happened in the past, they cannot affect me directly uh, because uh, it's only, it can only happen through my mind. Mm. Um, and then I saw um, myself outside of this life but being in life at the same time I was divided in two but though they are not divided um, and then uh, and I um, and I thought nobody can make me feel anything it's only my thoughts it's only through my thoughts that I can feel different feelings. 
what is that? But it it's true, but how? <laughs> but I knew that's real, that my husband cannot make me any feeling. It's, it's all made from my thoughts. And, and, and I felt this, I felt so whole. And, and everything just stopped. <laughs> mm-hmm. I stopped seeking, I stopped reading self-help books. I stopped my psychologist. I stopped everything. Um, I threw the books away. I threw everything out that's not helpful for me anymore because I knew I can rely on my insights. Mm. Um, And I know that I will, if not for my ego, I wouldn't be alive. So that ego is also important to have in life. And it's only how I have that relationship with that. It's, it's a new relationship to my ego, new relationship to myself and life and other people. So it's like um, uh, a wonderful time that changed everything. And I, this victim mentality that I have carried around me for so many years also just fell apart. And I saw uh, many people having in their, living in their own separate realities. Mm -hmm. And then I saw this great illusion called life, (laughs) but my mind cannot understand that even today. Illusion called life, what? (laughs) And I am more than this. I am more this physical, I am more than my identity I am it's like expansion expansion of of um, life and then I have a a greater uh, perspective Mm -hmm. and and but I also love the lows and the highs Mm -hmm. even though I sometimes wanted to just get away from my lows Mm -hmm. uh, but I have more respect then um, I don't have to do anything about them uh, and then sometimes I wanted to do something about my low moods low feelings but but I know they will pass it's like when they when we have snowstorm in Greenland I can't do anything about it except just let it happen and then it will pass and then uh, expect them um, accepting my humanness and being a whole human with all those feelings was available after that i didn't have to i didn't have to be so uptight (laughs) (laughs) and then allow myself to be in different kind of feelings and embrace them and then don't judge myself so much Mm -hmm. and then um, so it has been a wonderful journey and I have have so many other insights that I wanted to share but uh, there are too many but overall I feel that um, I have this great 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 hope for other people who are suffering and I'm so so happy that you are you guys are doing so much I am so happy on behalf of other people who are interested and then and then they also when they listen to their own inner wisdom or their own innate health it means so much it's when when even though they just listen a little bit and relax then they will be able to see something absolutely brand new And, and, and I'm so, so happy that you guys are doing that and your incredible work. And, mm. and that means a lot. That means a lot. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I have so much to tell. <laughs> and, and then... And, 
And I have a more peaceful, I have peaceful relationship to those people who have hurt me. And, and, and I have so much empathy. I have so much mm -hmm. love that they are still hurting. Mm -hmm. And I wish I can take their suffering away. I wish I can tell them that they are beautiful and that there's nothing wrong with them. But mm -hmm. it, it's not my job. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it has to happen from within themselves. So I can only love them from distance and, 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 and know that they are not broken either. Mm -hmm. They are not broken either. It's only in their own minds. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I really, really hope that someday they will see that, that, that they are more than their stories. Mm -hmm. so, so I have a, a very different relationship to um, to people who hurt other people and 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 I love this understanding because it gives us a whole new way to see humanity yeah. and then and and just seeing their true nature through their eyes that miracles can happen without effort and and I love that in my coaching conversations or when I give when I talk about this understanding in public that some people hear a little bit or some people hear big or I don't know but they are curious I I am so grateful that there are curious people mm -hmm. and and then it it I think it's beautiful journey we all are in it I am happy to able to share my story and even though it's a terrible story uh, about my traumas but it's not terrible anymore for me because it's only a story it's just a story and it's not a part of me because it it's it's just a story <laughs> and, and I I am grateful in a way that I have this transformation uh, from dark to white or dark to beautiful. And, and, and I'm grateful that I, I got insights and I didn't do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't come to that. <laughs> it just unfolded. And, and, and it's, it's an adventure because I don't know when the next insight will come and just I'm knowing that they will come in a way and out of nowhere mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes me so safe. <laughs> Even being though being in the you. unknown, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for your story and for your insights that you shared and the love that you just project out into the space and for everybody listening just what Eva Lo saw for herself the same is true for you yeah. that is so hopeful and wonderful and we hope today if you heard just a little something mm -hmm. in Eva Lo talking you continue to listen on to the next My Secret Life interviews. There's so much more to see and explore there. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we're going to post under the video where people can find out more about you and your work, Ivalo. Thank you so much. Thank you, too. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs>